here's a big old thistle. Anybody would recognize it. Uh, I've been mob grazing, if you will, the horses in this area. So they've grazed this right back. The sheep were in here before, then the horses. Some people do the horses first and then the sheep, but my sheep are my profit, not the horses. So in here, you can see there and there, the horses have eaten the flowers of the thistles. So it cuts down on the seed population. I'll come in and I'll chop this down as well. So some of them they've left, the seed heads, because they didn't quite get to the stage where they were tasty for the horses. But a lot of the other ones, you can see, they chomped through all the thistle heads right here. There's an old saying, if, um, chop in May, you double the display. Chop in June, you've cut too soon. Cut in July and you watch them die. Basically, the horses, you can see, trimmed this thistle bloom and this one here, but you can see a second one coming on. So that's basically what they're talking about is doubling the display. And there's more um, flower heads coming up in there, despite the horse chop eating that one. So these are some more here, thistles, that the uh, horses ate the blooms off of. Uh, it was hay I was getting from a particular farmer. It was always full of thistle. So I've spent years fighting thistles. And when I came home, these fields were nothing but thistles and ryegrass. So here you can see the horses haven't been in this section. You can see the grass is higher and you can see the flower heads of the thistles forming. And when the horses come in, they will eat those. So you can see the height of the grass there versus the height of the grass where the horses haven't been. So the horses have been here and they're going in there. Now it is eaten back by the sheep, but I'm getting, instead of mowing it or topping it, I'm getting the horses and you see they're fertilizing it as well. And so I do the field in sections so that their manure is relatively evenly spread. I'll now come in and harrow these paddocks that are now free of um, fencing. So here you can see more manure piles, but they're dispersed around the place. They're not all in one location because I've done, I think in this small section here, you can see the horses up there. So in this small section here, where you can see the electric fence, down to that fence line here, this side of the row of trees, the other side of this dead oak tree, and to there. I think I've done uh, three, six, nine, 10, 12 paddocks. So they're now starting on their uh, 13th paddock, which is up here at the top. And they have a line that electric fence up there, there's a lane for them to go down to the water trough, which is right there. So you can see here is the paddock they're grazing. And here is the new paddock. Uh, sorry, this is the paddock they're grazing now. This is the next paddock they're gonna go into. You can see there's electric fence and that's the third paddock. So I'm dividing a strip into three. And it spreads the manure because horses always have their favorite patch to go and shit in a big field and their favorite patch to eat. And this way they have to shit everywhere. And this is, is what's really good for the soil health. And I'll come in with the harrow. You can see they, there's no particular location now where they shit. It's everywhere, which is great. And I'll also come in and chop down those huge thistles. Now that I've changed where I get my hay, I'm no longer, I'm working on people who have diverse swords uh, of hay 
and feeding my sheep that to re-sow more into my fields. This field here, the rams you can see, are right under that tree over there. So they're sharing, they're free-ranging in the field, but the horses are paddock grazing. <laughs>